Uh, greetings, family. This is Bomani Tayemba. Welcome to our Africa Tours conference call. Today's date is October 4th, 2020, and we're here to uh, just talk about uh, all of the tour schedules that we have coming up. Uh, so we have Tanzania, November 20th to the 30th, uh, and Ghana, December 24th to January uh, 5th. Uh, so those are our next two journeys, and after that, uh, we're set to go to Senegal and the Gambia, and that's uh, April 2nd to the 12th, and then uh, May, uh, we'll be back in Ghana, and also December uh, for next year. And um, the South Africa schedule that was uh, replaced with Tanzania, uh, we have that set for November 19th to the 29th. So that's our schedule for this year and next year, and all of the schedule details are on our website on Africa for the Africans.org. And I'm the one that's organizing and leading us on the journey, so I'm always telling everyone, um, once you're committed to the journey, my goal is to make sure that everybody is in the relative tour group, our WhatsApp page, and have everyone in a, you know, on the email list uh, for all tour information. And my goal is to communicate with you via email and also via WhatsApp. And uh, anytime anyone needs to communicate with me in reference to the tour, just call me, text me, email me, and so on. Uh, my goal is to make sure that we're clear about everything that we're doing as far as this journey and make sure that we have a nice organized flow and we can just you know flow together and enjoy a wonderful journey together. And I'm always asking anyone who's going to be difficult or be a troublemaker, just please just send an email and there's request a refund because it's not fair to everyone else um, for anyone with negative energy to disturb their journey for a lifetime. Uh, that has happened you know, a few times, and it's, you know, it's embarrassing, and it's not worth it to waste all that money to go to Africa if you're not going to have the best time of your life. And that's what this journey is designed to, for you to have the best journey of your life, better than any of the other great magical moments that you have experienced. Uh, it's something special and different, and we, we put our heart and soul into it, and here to accommodate everyone to the fullest. And also I want to let everyone know that this is a tour for black pan-African energy-minded people. And it's, you know, what you see as far as the energy of the people in the pictures, the video, that's how we keep it and things like that. So um, I'm never sure who's watching and listening and things like that. Uh, so we just want to keep a nice, strong black power energy going and things like that and uh, make sure that all of our brothers and sisters who want to connect to their roots in the African diaspora, get a fair chance to just connect and enjoy themselves. So that's why we have so much documentation. We do these conference calls and we lay things out because once I'm there in the country, our goal is to, you know, the program is going. You know, we hit the ground running. So uh, the tour schedule, tour book, and things like that, you have access to way ahead of time for you to be clear about what you're doing and going on. And if you have committed to the journey, that means that you have invested your money and then you're clear on the, the, the general terms, the itinerary, the tour overview, and things like that. Uh, if you have not, it's not a wise move to make commitments without being clear on things. So that's why I spent all this time making sure that we have everything online clear so everyone can process everything. That way when we talk, we can get to those questions that we need to get to to make sure that you, you, know, you get what you're paying for. And so this is just a newsletter I have it on screen sharing. Some of us may not be on screen sharing, which is fine. I'm just reading from the newsletter. I'm going to be reading from a few different things. But these are things, again, they're all the reference to everything that we talk about. And it's impossible for me to cover all of the things that we have set on the tour itself um, based on the website details. So the goal today is to go to the visas for the three countries that you're going to need visas for. You're going to need a visa for Tanzania. Ghana, and also the Gambia. You don't need a visa for Senegal, and you don't need one for South Africa unless you're going to be there for more than three months or uh, 90 days. All the visa information I'm going over is based on requirements if you're a U.S. citizen, um, and that's the majority of people that's traveling. Some people are from other countries, so what I recommend for you to do is to be clear if you need a visa or not. Um, uh, so everything I just mentioned is that of the U.S. citizens to need a visa. So that's, um, and that's a bit, the thing I always recommend anyway for anyone that's traveling to a specific country, even though I send out visa information via email, which I'm going to go through, the best thing that I recommend everyone to do is also go to the embassy 
and we had to go to the website, look through the information on what's going on in the country and everything, and you know, use that as a step forward to being clear on all of the um, you know, all of the legal processes or all of the I'm trying to find my word, um, all, you know, all of the requirements um, and and regulations of what you have to be clear on um, going into the country. So you know, we have things like some countries are requiring COVID-19 tests, some countries are not. Some countries are requesting it um, before you get on a flight, and then they also requesting it when you get to the country, and then they you know, some want you to pay and things like that. So it's you know not all countries are doing the same things, and then some countries like South Africa is literally closed. Like they put US USA on the ban list. I saw that. I was like, you know, I was like, it's what it is. It's you know we have to move forward. So that's why we have Tanzania, and that's a you know a blessing in disguise because it's always hard to squeeze a new schedule in. And uh, especially when South Africa is doing good, we had a wonderful journey last year. But nevertheless, um, uh, uh, Tanzania is growing on me more and more, and uh, you know, I have a better feel for it than South Africa now. So you know, it may be one of those things where we just keep on going every November uh, after next year. But uh, anyway, family. So what I'm going to do next thing is I emailed everyone. If you're traveling to Ghana with me, Gambia, or um, Tanzania, I've emailed everyone a visa email. Since we're going to Tanzania next, uh, the Tanzania uh, visa process for November 2020 tour, and that's what it's saying in the title. Uh, so it also have an attachment, uh, and then once you just open the attachment, it just giving you all of the visa guidelines. And uh, what I'm going to do is sum up a whole lot of things, and then kind of just go through it because most of us should have our visa ready because you know, we've been going through that. So the main thing about the Tanzania visa. It is an online visa process. So once you get the email or once you access in the website and you go into the visa page on the uh, Tanzania tour um, on our website, you're going to, it's the same information. You're going to click on the link and it's going to give you an option to start a new visa. And if you already did your visa already and you're looking for the status, it has an option for you for status. And uh, beyond status, um, other option is for you to continue your visa. So once you're pro typing up the information, online um, you can always go back in and you know you're going to definitely need your ID number and you know and remember your security questions and basic information like that and uh, and also you know if you're doing a visa and you get stuck there's also an email below uh, the application and the best thing I recommend is this just like any other visa process you get stuck or you have any questions you can email them I mean you can also send me a message and you know, I'm always open to assist in any any of us but there are certain situations where you communicate with me and may tell you, hey, uh, the best thing to do in this situation is for you to reply back to them and let them know this is wrong or this is not correct or I have um, been trying to get updates on my visa and so on and, and those things. So some of those direct situations, you're going to have to email them. And I tell everyone, um, you know, it's, it's one of those situations in the world now where you have people who run in operations you know, like, a, like, a, like an embassy and you call on them and they don't answer and you click on every prompt and in the case of like Ghana and I'm trying to think of another country, um, the Gambia. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to pick on uh, both of them but they have some, and, and the same thing to Tanzania. Uh, so it's my, almost all of them just have bad customer service as far as phone calls and things like that. And I'm just speaking from my perspective. It's, you know, they may see things completely different. So, um, but one thing I can say for all of them is that when you email them, they do respond. They give them one to two days to respond, and they will communicate back with you. And then the best thing I recommend is getting right to the point because you can tell us the case that sometimes people are not reading your emails. You may put three questions on there, and they, they may answer one question. But, you know, uh, that's a part of us as a people to have to step our game up. And you know, embassies are very important because they're the, the connecting point to get those of us interested in a country connected. So, you know, sometimes these things may, may throw you off, but it's, you know, it's a part of our struggle as a people that, you know, we all, all of us, we have to just work towards better. So, but, uh, but you know, Tanzania visa process is one of the m more organized ones. And the best thing I like about this visa process is it is completely online. So you're going to make sure that you have a scanned copy of your uh, face and signature passport page. Uh, you're going to need a scanned copy of your passport style picture. And then uh, you're going to need a PDF version of your ticket. Uh, the, the ticket part is also simple. What you have to do is once you log into Delta Airlines or KLM, uh, once you go to the top right of the screen, 
uh, uh, you have access to, to download a pre PDF file. Uh, so you don't need to really print it and scan it. You just download the PDF file, save it on your desktop or in your documents, and then when you get to that part, which is towards the end, you'll be able to upload it. Now, the visa fees is $50 a single entry and $100 for multiple entry. Unfortunately, the single entry button is not available. Uh, and then even when I started reading different situations, they're saying visa is uh, $50, but for the U.S. citizen, it's $100. That's, um, that's visa on arrival, and that's also processing your visa ahead of time. And the, in the case of visa on arrival, unless you have an emergency where your passport is still somewhere else and you're trying to make certain moves, um, I recommend us doing a visa right now. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a very quick process. Um, and once you paid $100, uh, it will send you a confirmed email, and you should get an answer back in a few days, to up to seven to ten days. Uh, so it's, you know, it's not bad. Uh, and other things you're going to need is going to be things that I will provide for you in the email. So in every email I have, it's called support and documents. So that's going to be like the people who invited you. Um, uh, it's going to have address, email, uh, uh, locations, uh, hotels, and things like that. And uh, in the case of Tanzania, um, they ask you as far as your entrance point, which we're flying into Kilimanjaro, but and we're going to depart to Dar es Salaam. Uh, so that's um, our sequence. So things like that is just you know, I don't expect people to to just may know off the top of their head. So anything that I was going when I was going through the visa process and typing it up. What I did was just put it in the notes and put it together in an email. So I always tell everyone if uh, once uh, I send you these emails, just print it out, go through it, and once you start working on that process, you get stuck or something, you can call me and I'll help you the rest. Um, no matter if I'm in my office or out and about, it's just things I can answer off the top of my head based on just doing all of these things over and over and over uh, for so many years. So it doesn't matter if it's a new country or not. Once you start reading through the stuff, it's, you know, it's pretty standard. And then all other information is just your basic information. So that's it for that uh, wonderful uh, Tanzania um, visa process. Now for the Ghana one, i um, just going to go through this one um, smooth, uh, quick. Uh, same thing, uh, the requirements are attached. Um, there's also an image of what the Ghana visa stamp will look, which will be in your passport. Now, in the case of Tanzania, they're going to email you your visa um, itself, and then you can just print it out and put it in your passport or just have it in the side of it or so on. But in this case, the visa is a fix, so that means you have to send it in. So they do have a new process, which is online. So new email, what I put is just reference the, you know, the, the Ghana uh, visa link to where once you click on it, you'll start the online process. And uh, you, you're, all you're doing is literally follow an online process. So you, you know, you're looking at um, a three-month visa, uh, which is single entry for $60, and a multiple entry, was, which is good for anywhere from one year to five years. I've seen most people get three and five years, um, but there's no guarantee. But I've also seen the past people get one year and two years. Uh, so the good thing about it, you're going to get at least um, a year or so. You can get the visa done. Uh, right now would be a perfect time for any of us that's traveling to Ghana in December. Uh, and it's one of those things where we, you have more than enough help, so... Uh, we don't expect any mistakes to happen where you don't get your visa, uh, especially since we actually want us to work on it two to three months. Uh, so that's one thing that, you know, this is one process that you want to print out and go through it. And then I've added in their notes, and the notes are going to be uh, the two managers, um, which is Godson, that um, is the manager of the Mikkelen Hotel in Accra and Kumasi, and then Imacus, which is the owner of One Africa Resort. So they're, they're the people that invited us, and... Um, their contact details and information is right there to fill in and the application. And I do have, um, like I was saying, a sample visa application. Uh, so you can look at my sample application and anything that, because uh, mine is completely filled out. So it gives you an idea of just how to fill it out. Uh, most of the stuff on there is, again, is asking for things that you know, your personal details. And anything else is just uh, things based on what's on the flight itinerary, on the tour itinerary, or, or things that... Uh, you would know, and then anything like that that you would know, it's in the uh, visa uh, notes. Uh, so this is a process uh, that's um, you know literally just um, uh, not bad also, and with the new online process, it's a lot simpler. Uh, you have access to picking your 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 your, your return mail uh, that we can get your passport back. 
Um, I've not done it myself, so I don't know if they give you an option for you to use your, your own return mail, because I usually use Priority Mail, uh, which is like $7 two-day mail with tracking. And um, a few people have told me that um, they paid $29, you know what I mean? So for me, me personally, that's $22 of waste. That's, um, you know, that's almost like um, three quarters of a tank of gas or something like that. Um, then after thinking in terms of this economics, or even more important, as money I can spend in Ghana with my own folks, and we can, you know, do business together more. Uh, so just want to make sure that, you know, we're just clear on these uh, things. Um, so please just take your time and read through it. I'm available for questions uh, throughout the day, and trust me, you're not bothering me. I want to make sure that this is not a problem because I've had some bad situations. I've had one person show up at the airport with me just for the, just for the people uh, to say that, uh, your visa is expired, and then they don't do visa on arrival, so we can't let you on the board. That's when Ghana didn't do visa on arrival. But nevertheless, uh, you know, one thing you want to do if you travel to Ghana before, passports, look at your dates, make sure your passport is not expired, make sure it's not six months from expiring, all those things. Like I just look at my son's passport, and as soon as I get back from Ghana in December, i got to get him another passport. You know, his uh, child passports are like five years, so it's like this is like passport number three. Uh, it's 10 years old, but you know when you start getting those things, it just adds up. Like I'm on, I just got my third passport uh, as an adult. Um, so um, you know you just have to keep up with this. Um, and if you're not used to like like us, just always on a move. You know you're going to like three, four countries a year, and you just got to, I mean that's good. You got to have your stuff organized. I, you know it's like I can't tell you guys that oh, I forgot to renew my passport. I didn't know this happened. I mean you know. It's just not acceptable for me to do that. So I'm also letting everyone know, please just look at your documents and be clear. And if you need help to do anything, even get the new passports, all those process, you know, it's things that I can walk you through and help you with. Them. Uh, so just want to, you know, put that out there and let me go to the last visa process, um, which is the Gambia. Now, the Gambia uh, visa process is different from the rest of them. They give you a guaranteed five years, but it's 200 U.S. dollars. Right. And it's um, you know you fill out the the simple basic application and you you, know, you put in the package your your passport because it's going to be affixed to your passport and you put your passport style photo one and your application um, another one and you just staple the, the the photo to the application and then put them then you know make sure that you're clear on how they want the money uh, so usually most of the time it's the safest thing is always like a cashier's check. And unfortunately, that's one thing I meant to mention to you, Ghana. I was reading through the information, I saw that it said cashier's check only, and I just wonder why they went that route. But so the best thing I could recommend for everyone is when you're doing these visa process uh, for the Gambia and Ghana, just get you a uh, cashier's check. And uh, that way you're clear, and if the policy is changed, you're not caught up into anything. Now, in all of these um, countries I mentioned, with the exception of Tanzania, have rush visa. I would recommend never to pay for a rush visa. Just do the visa process ahead of time, unless you get caught in a situation where you're literally getting your passport late. All right, and uh, that visa process, not much to it. I uh, do have support and details, which is um, the location of travel, uh, the, ho the hotel, the manager, uh, and so on. And uh, have all of those things uh, right there typed up, just like uh, Tanzania and Ghana. Uh, those are usually the the things that you have to provide, the people who have invited you to the country and where you're staying. All right, so family, um, so that is it for the visa process. Uh, what I want to do is open up for questions, and then from there what I'm going to do is I'm going to go directly to this departure and reminder list for Tanzania, uh, which is relevant 100% to Ghana and also Gambia, Senegal, and South Africa. So since we're going to Tanzania uh, next month, we're going to go through that. It's 1 to 30. And so let me uh, start uh, by uh, opening us up for questions. Um, you know, since we're on this uh, visa path, I want to make sure that um, we clear all questions. So let me just focus on questions for visa. I'm putting everybody back in the mute mode. And once you're in the mute mode, you press star six to unmute yourself and give your name, um, your question, where you're calling from, and what you know, tour you're traveling on as much of the information as you can as possible, and then we'll go into your questions. Hello. Uh, greetings. Greetings, greetings, everyone. Um, this is Veltic from Toronto. Um, I'm calling in regards to Ghana tour. You mentioned about um, 
visa application within two and a half months prior um, departure. Is that still stand for now with the COVID era? Because I was trying to hold off until around November, and when I spoke to someone in the embassy, I, I, I applied for mine, and I see it approved. We got it approved. The guys have a tablet in hand, they send me a picture. So because I'm just wondering, anything can happen again, and it's closing down of embassies, and then it's open, and then you don't have it, and then it's, it's open, and then you can go to Ghana, but you didn't have your visa because a situation happened. So I'm just wondering if it's two and a half months um, or earlier. Uh, yes, um, how long is your visa? Your visa should be good for six months. Is it six months in Canada? Well, I'm getting a two year. You getting how much? Two years. Okay, perfect. So since you get a two year visa, that's perfect. Uh, the ideal time is just the, uh, as long as uh, the, the, the situation is uh, um, in the U.S., if you apply for a single entry visa, uh, it's good for three months. And I've seen it, it's, it's, I've seen it where people travel with me and they got that visa four months before they travel. You don't have to explain that when they get to Ghana, uh, it's, it's caught by one of the security officers and then you know, it gives them a hard time. So that's the purpose of things like that. You want to make sure that you get visas before they expire. Uh, get visas and they don't and, and not put yourself in that situation. So the multiple entry, any kind of multiple entry that's good for one, two years, uh, you just get it anywhere in that time frame and if you can even get it uh, four or five months at a time, it's worth it. Uh, yes, anything can happen um, with those embassies and things like that. And uh, like right now, we're in a situation where people are told that they can't get them U.S. passports uh, unless it's like a, a live and die, you know, life and death situation. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yes, so excellent. That's good. You got two years. And uh, it didn't take long, right? They well, actually, you know what happened with Mani? I know someone that we communicate with at the embassy, so they were keeping me updated. So I sent it off this week, and I'm saying, I, you know, they know how anxious I am. So they sent me... Just a picture of it, not with my name or anything, Alana said, this is it, but it has mail back out for me, just to keep me quiet, you know what I mean, just to keep my anxiety level low. So, it's, it's, uh, I'm supposed to get it any time now. Oh, perfect. So, that didn't take more than 10 days, I could have, all of no, you? No, I, I send it off on when Tuesday, one day post, so they get it maybe, say, Wednesday, Thursday, and quick time, it's just happening like that. By Friday, I saw that, the person, I don't know, because we communicate, um, he, he, um, he sent it to me. So, it's like... Um, it's a, if it's an overnight post, when I mail it on Tuesday, they should get it back to me on Wednesday. And by Friday, I just saw like it's already you know going to be posted. So that was very quick. All right, well, perfect. Uh, so basically, um, uh, you're telling me that uh, you you follow the directions of the uh, the Ghana visa email and you sent it out and it got processed. So perfect. So the the, the information uh, is clear. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, perfect. Let me know if you have another question, and I'll get the next person. Okay, no, thank you, Bamani. I had a Can comment. On to the next one. Absolutely. Um, uh, and I've I got a comment. Bamani, I uh, had a comment. Oh, uh, you're fine. I uh, give you a name. We're calling from your question, okay. and uh, we can hear you. Okay. So uh, this is Shelley. I'm calling from um, Beaverton, Oregon, Portland, Oregon. I'll be traveling with you to uh, Ghana in. Uh, December and uh, I just wanted to kind of encourage people who are still applying for their visas I got mine in the mail this is the first you guys are the first people that I am letting know that I have received my passport back with the stamp on it I got the multi-year and what I will say is because I know my anxiety level associated with COVID and borders closing and possibly reclosing and whatever I did not want to take any chance, and so I did pay the extra to expedite it. I am resting a lot easier just having it in my possession. So um, I understand. I mean, I would love to have had that money to spend in Ghana, but it's more important for me to get to Ghana. So that's that's my input. But, yeah, <laughs> it finally came back. Also, I did. that was the second time I mailed it. The first time I mailed it, I sent a money order and I sent a return envelope. They used the return envelope to send it back because they had to have the cashier's check, and I had to pay for the return envelope online. Very bizarre, but I just did what they asked. All right, cool, perfect. That's so, it for me. So appreciate that. Uh, so Diego family, uh, if there's an, a mistake that's being made, uh, 
they'll communicate back with you. Trust me, I've had I've, I've been there too. You know, I sent out my visa for uh, for my son, and you know, didn't put um, you know, his mother information in there, and they sent it right back. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Uh, just make sure that we just clear all of the things. And the good thing about it, if we do it now and then there's a mistake, you know, it could be fixed. So you end up, you know, getting it done in a month. Uh, but if you, you you like pushing it and you're supposed to go in like a week and you do that, it's not gonna work. And also, family, I don't know if there's any visa on arrival, so that's why we're also pushing to let everyone know get your visa uh, ahead of time and get it now. But I appreciate you, uh, Shelly. Uh, let me know if you have another question, and then if not, I'll meet you. Yes. Thank you. Not for me. All right, family, uh, we're talking about the uh, visas, uh, Tanzania, Ghana, and also uh, the Gambia. We can see if, if anyone have any questions or if anyone wanted to talk about the visa process, if it was fast, smooth, if it was drama, and things like that. I family, I got a whole lot of people on this call. I got, in, got about a good 50 people traveling with me this year. Uh, Looking for these questions for visa, I just want to make sure we clear this out because um, we're going to move on to other stuff, the next conference calls. Good morning, okay. this is Charles. Uh, greetings, Brother Charles. Yeah, I did my visa back in February and I sent it off and I got a turnaround of one week. I didn't do the online application, I did the application that you emailed to me and I um, basically I just got me a money order for $100, and I included a return envelope, and that's all I did, and I got mine to the turnaround of a week. There was no issues at all. It's very straightforward. Well, per perfect. Appreciate you following directions and things like that. Yeah, I remember when I was talking to you, and I was telling you, I was like, yo, it's all good, man. Well, once, I, once, I give, once I send you the email and you look through it, you'll feel much more relaxed. Because <laughs> I know that the yeah, because like, I got to send yeah. my passport off. You for real? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because even I followed the template, you know, and everything was very smooth, you know, because, you know, I was communicating with you the whole time, and I ended up with a four-year visa, so, you know, uh, everything went smooth. I'm surprised they charge Canadians so much money, though, so compared to what we pay in the States, I think, you know, they get a lesser visa uh, period, plus they pay more, so I, I, I really don't understand that, but on hey. the States. Hey, it's American you know, privilege. It's American privilege. Yeah, I guess. And not only that, um, as I did text some, some items in the chat uh, a few days ago where Jamaicans are now exempted from having to have a visa in Ghana. So actually Jamaicans are exempted to about 27 uh, countries in Africa that are visa-free. So, you know, that's going to increase, you know, good trade. Jamaican and everything, so Absolutely. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. All, all, you, all you Jamaicans with uh, which American passport and that, that have switched over, uh, yeah. won't reconsider. <laughs> well, well, I well I actually have both, so I'm gonna get my Jamaican passport renewed. So I'm I'm gonna renew it. I'm gonna update it again. It, it expired for over 20 years, so I'm gonna update it. Because the visas can get expensive and. I may want to go to other African countries, so I won't really need a visa. So that, that's great. And for Tanzania, the Jamaicans don't need a visa there either, you know. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I definitely appreciate you sharing that with folks. Hopefully people, you know, get it. And I, you're, you're telling, me, telling me that I spend, I spend a fortune on visa. And yes, I Yeah, yeah, you do. You do. You spend an absolute fortune on visas. I think you could save a ton of money. Because cause if you're, if, you know, if your Jamaican passport is up to date, you won't need one for Tanzania. And when South Africa opens up, you won't need one for, ta uh, for South Africa either. So, you know, you would save a lot of money, you know, for both you and your son. So it would be a good thing. Yeah, we'll see how these work. I'm still trying to see who's going to get these passports because most people I know have expired passports for a few decades, like you and I. Yeah, and yeah. I held on to mine. I held on to mine, though, when it expired. I didn't throw it away. Yeah, yeah, I was just saying, like, you know, maybe, you know, like, if you have your son's Jamaican passport, if your son has a Jamaican passport, both you and him will save quite a bit of money, you know, with, as far as visa fees are concerned. Because yeah. the Gambia just put their fees up. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes, um, it's um, it's a visa process hotel. I remember going to Ghana, Togo, Benin, and that's like Ghana visa. I'm fine with a hundred dollars, three five years is good. But uh, you know, one sixty, then another one sixty from both Togo and Benin, and they only giving you like yeah. a three, three month visa. Uh, but, exactly. But uh, you know, I don't. You know, but nevertheless, yeah, it's always a good process. I guess what I'm trying to explain to everyone. Um, uh, wherever you come, if you're not an American-born uh, citizen and you have another country you can get passports from, or if you are in route to Ghana to build your citizenship, get all those things. It does, you know, Charles right, it does add up. Uh, trust me, I have a, I can yeah. list the amount of money I've paid for visas, but I just look at it as a, you know, part of the business of things. Uh, but um, and then if you know, if you can get three passports, you can get a Jamaican passport, an American passport, and a Ghanaian passport. You know, you just work your way to move around the world. So. That's our lesson for the day, right there. You know what I mean? This, um, yeah. This, this, this become global citizens are moving around. Yeah, because Trinidad and Tr Tobago, they also these are free to uh, Ghana also. With Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago is the only two islands that is visa free, as far as Ghana. That's what I saw on their consulate. So I'm asking a extra question that I know and I can answer, but I just need it for the recording. So um, what about what about American what about American citizens what about black people in America? No, they haven't. Well, you know why they're not going to do that because you already have the answer to that one because America is not going to make it visa free for the Africans for the Ghanaians to come back here. So that's why they're not going to do it. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate you explaining. You had that. I've talked to you. People. You had that discussion with Dinah the mayor about a year or so ago. Yeah, you know I gotta always educate my brother. <laughs> On things that because yeah. a lot of times what we do is turn around and say people are picking on us and I was like yo I was like all black folks around the world got it rough some of us may have more options and flexibility than others but it's like you know it's like you know, where some of us have a little advantage in certain situations based on those diplomatic connections others don't so in this situation yeah. America is straight up ripping off the Ghanaians and and all other uh, African nationals they have these big crooked embassies and what they do is they lower people down by the American dream. And if it's like 100 people paying $150, maybe two, three, four, five, maybe six will get the visa for the day. Now, you are doing the rest of that money. They're banking it like they, they, they do. You know what I'm saying? The American criminal system. They just, you know, that's another one of the American scams that they have. Uh, that beat the scam. Money, as far as I'm concerned, it's easier now for people like in Jamaica, to actually go to certain African countries than it is to travel throughout the Caribbean because if you go to Cuba, you need a, you need a visa. And if you go to certain other islands, you also need a visa too. Not all, but some. You still need to have a visa. But a, a good majority of the countries in Africa are making it visa-free for Jamaica and for other Caribbean islands too, which is a good thing, which is a really good thing. It will increase trade. Yeah, I mean, all the all developing nations would look at it like that. Um, and, you know, that's how you build yourself up together. Uh, diplomatic connections, uh, trade, import, export, um, yeah, exchange, uh, international program with different schools and things. So, absolutely. So, uh, uh, Charles, I appreciate your energy. Let me get uh, some of these other questions, and then we'll get into the Tanzania process. Sure. Sure. No problem. All right. Um, person calling from Atlanta, 7451. Uh, give your name, where you're calling from, from me, your question. Yeah, but my name, this is Derek. All right, greetings, Derek. I got your question. Uh, I didn't have a question, but I was just uh, going to let you know, I guess, once you get to the, are we uh, talking about the visa for Tanzania yet? I was going to say, give my comp, comp um, my. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, went, I went through all three visas and how to do them, access them and everything. I'm just taking questions. Oh, so I. Visas. Yeah, I was going to say that I applied for mine and actually put it in on Sunday morning and actually got it in one day on Monday uh, Monday afternoon. So that was a very fast process online. So you got the visa, you got the visa um, stamp itself that you that you printed out from your email. The email to you printed it out and cut it and put it in your your passport. Uh, I haven't done that, but they sent me the page where it said I was approved. But they did it in one day. I appreciate. Let me mute you and then. All right, Juma. No, I, I just thought I'd chime in and listen to see what the progress was on being able to leave the country because, as you know, I had my tour pushed back till 2021 in April because of the COVID virus. 
And so, you know, right now I'm just monitoring the situation with uh, with your tour, with your tour, to see how things are uh, were moving ahead with you guys going to Tanzania. Uh, yes, everything is set for all the countries. Yeah, we just talk about only country that's still closed is South Africa, and we anticipate by November they should have it figured out by then. Uh, oh. so, uh, the only thing is, you know, is every country going to we're flying into Senegal, we're flying into Ghana, and we're flying into uh, Tanzania. They all require for you to have a COVID-19 test. So what I've explained to everyone on all the group page and you know uh, is that you literally want to make sure that you find a location where you can get tested the day off or the day before the tour, before you travel, and then make sure that they can give you the results the same day with that stamp and details. That way you don't have no drama uh, after the expiring and things like that. Uh, yes. I just don't. Go ahead. The same way we did with the yellow fever shot, right? Uh, no, this is a little more serious than yellow fever. Um, I don't know what's going on for yellow fever, but um, this test just has to be done to where everything is signed off and looks good. So... And then showing it to whatever agent uh, that's letting you on the flight, you don't want to have no drama from them and definitely want to have no drama from the folks uh, when you get to the airport in uh, Africa. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah because um, Ghana's charging $150 for the test or something like that? Yeah, so uh, on top of, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a crooked uh, uh, situation. I'm, I'm hoping that by December come, um, that, that, that thing is crashed. Uh, but... For so now, um, you, on top of you getting one before you leave, you have to get one in Ghana when you get there. Um, what they have changed is they used to force you to get pay for it online, but now that system is kind of broke, so now you have to bring the money via cash there in Ghana. So they can collect it. You know, so they're collecting for the Christmas party. Right, right, right. And then they're going to give you a fake test that um, that's supposed to get you the result back in 15 minutes. And you have advanced clinics and folks here who can't figure that out about 15 minutes. Okay. So as far as Gambia and Senegal are concerned, just have a test within 48 hours of departure. Uh, yes, exactly. That's it for all countries that we're traveling to. Okay. And South Africa may come up with the same thing or different, but that's so far next year where I don't know if things will just change. But right now, that's what we have to work with if we're looking to travel. Uh, so unfortunately, it's, um, it's an additional hassle because uh, at one point I thought COVID tests were free, but you know, I don't know no better sometimes. Um, yeah. They live in America, tend to think things are free. Uh, but um, I've seen people send me quotes of them having to pay like $119, $120, $130, $150. So the Ghana situation is real bad because now you have to pay double fees. You know? And then on top of that, you have to pay $100 for your visa. That's already $400 and you haven't hit the ground yet. Yeah. I mean, this, you know, this is the kind of thing that discourage people. You know, some yeah. people I'm like, you know, some people are like, hey, that's that's a portion of my rent. You know, I'm not going anywhere. Right. So, um, we just gotta figure it out in Africa. To you know, I can understand people want you, you have a COVID test, but having to take another one there and having to go through the drama of delay, and that's the only country. So, you know, the dumb stuff that Ghana and other countries are doing, like South Africa, they're gonna lose all the people to Tanzania. That's why I'm. I'm making my way with the Tanzania. I'm going to start drum up some energy so I can have me a second location to build something you know, beyond Ghana. Okay. That's okay. all right. All right, perfect. Uh, so um, just uh, meet yourself back and the next person. Uh, as a matter of fact, next person, hold on. Uh, Kim, your line is open. Um, hi, Bomani. I just wanted to, to say that um, I contacted Delta and the – COVID test has to be specifically the PCR test, which is the swab, the nasal swab. Apparently, there's two type of tests, and they are turning people away if they get the antibodies test. So the agent told me I have to have the PCR test. So I just want to let everyone know there's two different tests, and the one to get into Ghana has to be the nasal swab, which is called the PCR test. All right, Kim, I appreciate that. So everyone, what we have to do in these groups, and you know, so for our Tanzania group, especially in the Ghana group, we're going to be having a lot of communication in the group page, and also we're going to be doing private video calls with our specific group. And if you miss the, the, the recording, it's fine. Uh, the, the video link will be sent immediately. Um, and all we're doing is we're talking about all of these things in full detail, 
And that's the list I'm also going to go through. Um, this is a more extended list, but we're going to be talking about those things because my biggest thing about how I do these journeys uh, with all the people that I travel with is everything is organized way ahead of time. And, you know, that's one of the, the ways you have to do it. Um, so um, I want everyone to feel calm. Uh, we're going to get through this. We're going to make sure that you're good. I will never take anyone to any country where I don't spend my time looking at, you know, looking at the uh, regulations, looking at what they have to carry, what they have to have, and then, you know, actually we have, we have tour guides that we pay, you know, we pay, so I'm always drilling them with questions, and we go through everything, and we keep on going through, so it's everyone that if you don't join calls, you listen to recordings, and if nothing else, uh, just um, call me and communicate with me, asking the right questions, and I'll answer it for you, but everything is on the list that we're going to talk about, but let me answer a few more questions, um, and then um, we're going to go through that list. Kim, you have another question before I meet you. And also, everyone, do me a favor. When you get into these calls, it gives you an option to put your name just like any other video call or conference call. That way I can see who's, all I see is a bunch of numbers. Uh, Lidani, I'm trying to unmute you. Um, your line is open. Okay, so I have a question, actually two questions. If um, there's a couple in the household and we're sending our visa, is it okay to send it in the same envelope, or should we just send separate packages? All right, yeah, you send it in the same uh, outgoing mail. What you want to do is put it in two separate actual, you know, uh, envelope itself, uh, and then put it in the, you know, your outgoing mail. Okay. So it can be sent off together. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, so for the COVID testing, so we're supposed to get it, like you noted, the day before or to get rapid, uh, to get a test right away. What The question that I have is, what if they come back negative? Like, we would just have to travel another time with you? It hasn't happened, but I'm just talking about hypotheticals. Uh, yeah, it's, um, I don't have all the answers, but one thing about me, I, I, I work with any, anyone who knows me, I, I just do my best to help us in the best way. So number one, uh, your ticket, uh, your ticket can be rescheduled. Delta will give you a credit. Um, we just explain that situation. Now, as far as the the rooms and a few things, the best we can do is give you the best amount of credit on top of that. Uh, uh, the you because know, once we before I leave, most of the money is like sent off, with the exception of you know, some of the meals that we'll eat and a few things, because uh, it's it's difficult to carry around twenty, thirty thousand dollars and things like that. So um, you may, you know, you're in that case, you're gonna lose some money because uh, everything is set for you. But uh, uh, the ticket will be good, and at least half of the remaining amount of money will be good um, to where we can just put it towards another trip. And the goal is to just work it out as best as possible, uh, and just kind of salvage as much as possible. Uh, so I've had situations like this before, and if you know, you may lose a few hundred dollars. My goal is not to put the people in a situation where they're gonna lose money. Uh, so we set everything up as best as we can to make it work, um, and just so so just um, keep away from the sick people, and the crazy, and, and I always tell people in general keep away from the crazy ones also. Uh, hey, but money, I have a uh, sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, I posted in the uh, chat group with the Tanzania uh, trip uh, for next month about uh, if anybody is interested in doing a. Afterwards of the um, your tour, uh, doing a safari, I think that's a very extraordinary, uh, extraordinary thing to do. Is go to the Serengeti and do a full fledged uh, safari. So if you could, uh, I guess if anybody was interested, I posted information in the prices of the the tour uh, after the one we're doing, the main one, for anybody that's uh, interested. There. The safari van or the jeep uh, takes up to six to seven people. And there's a discounted price for a, a, a group of six or seven people, so I think that'll be a good opportunity if anybody's interested in things like that. We can uh, go on one of those uh, after the main tour, and that would take people staying over also and having their ticket adjusted by both money. The ticket date moved up. All right, perfect. Let me um, yeah, so let me address that. Um, so uh, for those of us that's in the different groups, um. Uh, for Derek just posted something in Tanzania group, but um, you know, feel free to communicate, uh, especially for those who are staying back and things like that. Um, and then also for those who are staying longer, remember, whatever ticket that I got for you is what I got for you. 
uh, based on the dates of your return. So if you didn't give me a return date, your return date is the date when we're all coming back. Uh, but you can always change a ticket. KLM Airlines, that's Delta Airlines, will charge you about $300 to change a ticket. So anyone that's traveled with me in the future and you want to stay in one month, two months, or whatever, however long, all I have to do is change the return date. And for the most part, once it's in the same season, the price is usually not much of a difference. And if it is, it's maybe $100 or so. Uh, but the goal is always just to kind of just, when I work something out for you. So I also I try to put that out there because sometimes, you know, as much as possible, I encourage people to get the most of their, their getaway because we can only do these tours for like eight, ten days because other than that, we start hitting the budget mark where it gets to like closer to 4,000 the next, you know, you know, you start losing a lot of people. I tell me before I um, just go through this list, uh, does anybody have any other question in reference to the visa? All right, so perfect. 